just wanted to chat with you a little bit about your background, um, you know, and get get to know you a little bit before we put your pieces up and they have a permanent home <laughs> in, in Westmoreland County in Greensburg. So it's really, it's really nice to see you. It's nice seeing you as well. And no, I can't thank you guys enough for the opportunity to be a part of something so cool. Yeah, we, we're, we're so excited. First of all, um, for the folks that don't know you, just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, not a problem. Uh, my name is Zachary Rudder. I am a professional artist in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, I've been doing this for about five years now. And uh, more and more things keep surprising me as the road keeps traveling forward. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure, especially especially now. Um, so you're from West Mifflin, which is really cool. Um, how does that like influence your work? Okay, uh, so uh, I grew up in West Mifflin. I live in Homestead now, but West Mifflin has been so wonderful to me. Um, I'm excited to say that I was actually voted one of, or I was actually one of the youngest recipients of their Distinguished Alumni Award. So uh, several years ago, I was invited back to the high school to speak about being a professional artist, and they awarded me this this nice uh, certificate of, of being a distinguished alumni. So West Mifflin has been fantastic to me. It is where I started my creative endeavor. <clears throat> Sorry, as like a, as a small kid, uh, I've always been fascinated with art classes, and all of my teachers from West Mifflin, like art teachers and and other teachers have always pushed me to follow this path. And I still have good connections and relationships with a lot of those teachers to this day. And uh, West Mifflin has been wonderful to me. It re they really have been. Definitely. Talking a little bit before we started about your style and how it's visually interesting and it's really fun and cool at the same time. Like, how did you develop that? So um, I've been working on this style forever. Uh, you can see it pretty obviously. It's kind of inspired by like pop art and like comic book art. Uh, I grew up reading comic books as a kid. Uh, I got my first comic book. It was Spider-Man number one, Ultimate Spider-Man number one, back in like 2004, 2005. And it's been nonstop ever since. Um, my style is heavily inspired by like the art of Jack Kirby and Keith Haring, but I want to try and make it more, even more so universally recognizable. I want it to be bright and positive and colorful so that as soon as you see it, you at least know the feeling of it, which is happiness and love and, and positivity. So I, I've been working on this style forever and it just continues to grow and grow. But, um, even now the panels behind you, you can see in the sky, there's all that grooviness, like 70s wavy vibes, but it's actually inspired by topographical maps. So the skies in those panels are actually the topographical map of Greensburg. And uh, it's that a really so unique cool. way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, the, the inspiration behind that is more so like, it's all my art is meant to push a message of love. So I thought by incorporating these maps, we're showing that we are all just dots on a map universally across the board. That at the simplest form, that's what we are. So there's a similarity and a connection there that hopefully can translate to conversation, which can translate to relationships and continue to push that message of love forward. Yeah, for sure. That's that's really cool. I didn't I didn't know that. See, we're all learning some stuff today. <laughs> um, that's, so, I'm happy you guys reached out because I, I, I was so excited to talk to everybody at the event and everyone was so excited to hear that it's like, oh, there's even more Greensburg in this than I expected. Yeah, I, I, I love those layers. I think that's really cool. And a lot of the pieces in Art in the Alley um, have more than a surface level connection to Greensburg and Westmoreland County. So that's really cool that, that you included that. Um, so what encouraged you to like take the leap and like pursue art full time? Uh, I would say this, it's out of necessity. I just, I don't even know what else I would do with my life if I didn't have art. Um, I was lucky enough to go to Slippery Rock University for fine art. And I had a painting professor there who I'm still, I'm an amazing friend with, um, Heather Hurdle. She, uh, she saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself at the time. I didn't know what I wanted to do art wise, but she actually uh, gave me the opportunity to paint my first mural, which was for her daughter's pediatrician's office as a as a junior in college with like a crappy part time job and no money. I got this awesome paid gig to work at this doctor's office and it, it kind of skyrocketed from there. So like she gave me the opportunity to see the potential in making a living out of it. And I didn't go full time right from then and there. So I've, I've had multiple part time jobs and day, day jobs and maintenance gigs from then up until 2018. And uh, just seeing the potential in making a living off of just artwork and the, the impact that it has in the community really inspired me to want to do this full time. And I just knew there was no way I would not be able to at least try. Yeah, for sure. That's 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 really cool. Um, 
I think it's something that's that's admirable for sure because that's brave. <laughs> um, thank you. And, thank. I, I tell everyone I, I wouldn't wish this on my own my own worst enemy unless it was absolutely the only thing they could think of doing. Like I, I wake up, I go to sleep, art, art, art on my mind. So like there's it's an addiction. <laughs> there's no way around oh, it. Oh sure, yeah, <laughs> that's super cool. So one of the things that I think is really cool and something that I think is most interesting is you're known for live painting like what draws you to just keep doing it uh well you know honestly it's it's the people it is absolutely the people um even with painting the panels at the arts walk um there's just so much more that comes to it like in, if i were to paint those paintings in my studio and install them the it wouldn't translate as well to the people that were there seeing it happen live yeah. um it's a level of me putting myself on the surface of the canvas i get to talk to the people as we're walk as, as they're walking around and watching me work i could tell them about the topographical maps i could tell them about the inspiration and um, it's a lot of just meeting people and and pushing that spread love message of just communication leads to relationship so live painting has been that like source to make new friends make new connections and push this message forward yeah, for sure. That's that's super cool. I mean, and that's, you know, it's a different meaning when you get to talk to somebody about it instead of just reading it on a plaque. Um, and Absolutely. People. And I, I love hearing other people's ideas. Like when someone were like walks up to me as I'm live painting and sees something in the work that I'd never even in my wildest dreams could have imagined. <laughs> and I'm like, where did you guys even see that? Like, I love that art can be that thing where it's like, I see something this way, you see something this way, but we're still able to meet in the middle and discuss that. And it, it kind of pushes that relationship idea. Yeah, that's super cool. So like behind me, you designed two new pieces to be added into our Art in the Alley installation. Uh, one of which, this one, um, you painted live at Arts Walk. Um, can you talk about both of these pieces and your creative process for those? Okay, um, so I knew going into it that I wanted to do something for Greensburg, something that was iconic and recognizable. And um, the, the person that got me involved in Arts Walk is a good friend of mine, Adam. And uh, we were discussing back and forth, like what can we put in this alley? What are things that we can do? And architecture is like universally recognizable. Again, it gets back to that universal message. Um, and through discussing with him, the courthouse made a per make perfect sense because it is like an iconic centerpiece to Greensburg. And then going from that more like government building to something more fun and like exciting like the Palace Theater, which is historic and iconic in and of itself. Um, the inspiration behind now that we found those two places was like, how can I stretch the story even further? And as you can see, the courthouse has the daytime sky the palace has the nighttime sky. So the narrative I was telling everybody at the Arts Walk was like, if you have a good night out at the palace, don't have too much fun because you might end up at the courthouse the next morning. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> yeah. No, but these pieces are just meant to be colorful, exciting images that like you said, people would be excited to pose in front of and immediately you're gonna walk past that and have a story of that show you saw at the Palace Theater or that time your brother, uncle, sister, whatever ended up right. at the courthouse, you know? Right. so. It, it's more so pushing the narrative of the people that are from the community. They see those buildings and they build their story up from there. Yeah, for sure. I think especially in like the Pittsburgh region too, how we describe things, not by street names, but Absolutely. you know, where that old sheets used to be or things like that. Yep. So like we're really defined by our architecture here and we're really proud of it. And so um, I think these two pieces are like a perfect, perfect like installation for for Greensburg and Art in the Alley, that's super cool. Um, so what were some of your favorite interaction you've, you've had like during Arts Walk? Oh man, uh, there were so many people there. I had the opportunity to talk to so many wonderful people from the community. My favorite aspect of the whole day, which I was talking to my fiance who was there helping me after the event, I just, it, the love of Greensburg is so prominent in the entire community. Like anyone that came up to see me painting they were, their eyes lit up when they saw that I was painting the palace that, or like they saw the courthouse painting in the background. They're like, oh, that's awesome. Like I could feel the positive energy of the community and it's evident in the alley. Like the art in the alley is such a beautiful creative spot that it's just so awesome to see people that take such pride in their community. And that's kind of what I want to do with my art. I want to push out a message of community of this idea that we're all together. And I could see that Greensburg has that just inherently but so many good interactions. I got to talk to families that came up to talk and, and were excited about the artwork. Um, the thing that I really enjoyed the most was other live painters. Well, oftentimes I'm like by myself or with one other live painter and you guys had the whole Greensburg Art Center <laughs> painting along with us. So that was a lot of fun. 
yeah, for sure. The camaraderie is the camaraderie is fun. We are small, but we are mighty. Uh, <laughs> we we definitely know how to have a good time, and we love we love where we are. So it's that's super cool. Um, so, how did your participation in Greensburg Greensburg Arts Walk come to be? How did you get involved with us? <laughs> so I mentioned his name a little bit already. Um, Adam uh, Seifert. Seifert. He I know him as Adam Fitz, uh, the, the rock star musician, but. Uh, he's been a good friend and supporter of mine for a few years now. Uh, back when the pandemic started, I had this like Hail Mary pass of like a drawing sale to try and stay afloat while like all the live painting gigs were shut down and everything. And Adam was nice enough to purchase several of them for his stickers for his, his music career, a couple family portraits for his house. So he, he's been fantastic in supporting me. And uh, he reached out to me and said, hey, I have one panel that I want you to paint for the alley. That led to two panels in the alley, which led to live painting at the arts walk. So it, it was really nice to talk to him and kind of develop this whole thing from a quick conversation into what it is today. So I, I owe him a lot for being involved in this arts walk. Yeah, we're, we're so we're so we were so lucky to have you, too. Um, I heard nothing but amazing things about you. Everyone loved you. So uh, we hope you'll be back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Us for sure. Um, so your signature includes this little this little sun heart that we see back here, and it's in murals and pieces all across Pittsburgh. I mean, I've seen them everywhere. Uh, you know, I'm down there all the time, and even a Port Authority bus, <laughs> which yeah. some of us have seen, which is super cool. And what inspired you to create it, and how did that lead to your Spread Love Army initiative? Um, you know, I still kind of wondered to this day, like, how did this all start? How did this all happen? And how did I get here? But um, I was working with an artist back in college while I was still a student. And he gave me a prompt that was like, he, it was like a mentorship. So he would always give me little like, oh, here, I'll see you next week. Here's your assignment. Bring it in. Let's talk about it. And one of the assignments was like, what do you want your art to mean? Like, what do you, how do you want people to view your art? How do you want it to make you feel? And try and translate that visually as easily as possible. And it was always love. It was always positivity. I want people to look at my art and smile. And um, in my college dorm room, I had a painting, a print of a painting by Keith Haring, who I mentioned before. He's a pop artist from the 80s that I am absolutely obsessed with. And uh, he has a similar heart image that's, that's very closely related to that. And uh, seeing that, it resonated with me like, that is it. The heart is universal. That is the message of love. When you think of love, you think of a heart. You think of just that. And uh, that slowly led, well, that's what I ended up painting and presenting to him. And he's like, oh, this is amazing. This is incredible. This is like exactly what you want your art to mean in a, vi in a visual representation. And that one little conversation, that one little prompt led to everything that I have going for me today. So I'm very lucky to see how, how like planting a seed can grow into a flower like that, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, looking, looking at your art, looking at your pieces, I mean, you, you nailed it. <laughs> um, it's, yeah. it's, well, thank it's, you. it's really cool. Um, and, and it's definitely a conversation piece that I've had with my friends, you know, when we're out to drinks or, or things like that. Uh, we see your murals all over the place, which is really cool. Uh, and so awesome. even even Pittsburgh, even though Pittsburgh is your home base, you've created pieces all over the world. <laughs> um, what's your most impactful trip that you've made uh, to, to do art? OK, so, yeah, I have been very lucky. Like I said, I don't even know how I got to be where I am today. I've, I've been to several different countries for, for my art. Um, the most impactful one was my most recent trip uh, back in November. I took two weeks to travel to Africa. And while in Africa, I, um, I painted a schoolhouse in a village in the Volta region. Um, it was two weeks of just d indulging in the culture, being a part of all these different people's lives and uh, trying to teach them a little bit about art and being an artist. And it was incredible to, th to think that there's a part of the world where people don't even know what an artist is. Like I had to explain to them, like, I'm going to come in and paint on your walls. And they're like, the walls are already painted. They're white. <laughs> they had no idea what art was and um it, it was insane to think like i'm this guy that's teaching you this thing that has been a part of it's been my addiction forever my whole life and uh it, it was just really rewarding to see the start of the trip where they had no idea what was going on and at the end of the trip i actually gave all the students in the school gym bags filled with sketchbooks and art supplies and to see from the beginning of them not knowing to the end where they're drawing with me was just the best thing I could have ever done. It was honestly so impactful. 
And uh, it was done because of the people in my community that support me. We raised money through GoFundMe. We were able to cover the cost of the trip and buy all the art supplies just through a GoFundMe and just people supporting that message. So it was incredible. I love that. And your energy is so like magnetizing that I'm sure you gave some of those kids at least the bug for art. So they'll probably, <laughs> they'll probably talk about you for a long time. I'm sure. That's oh, so definitely. Cool. Definitely. That was another thing that I love too, is like every morning we would, we had to drive into the village. It was in the, in the woods and in, in the forest, we had to drive in on motorcycles. So I'm on the back <laughs> of a guy's motorcycle holding onto him for dear life. And every morning as we presented this, we, we like entered up to the school, the motorcycle you could hear for miles. So all the students would come running out of the school and scream, brother Zach, brother Zach, brother Zach. Every single morning, it was like a parade of these little kids coming over to see me. And it was, it was just an incredible feeling. I, I love that. And that's, you know, that's unforgettable too. That's, that's, that's really cool. That's. Yeah, that's definitely. Cool. I, we're actually working on editing a video. I have, I hired a Ghanaian videographer while I was there that filmed the entire two week journey. And I have an editor in Pittsburgh that's currently working on the video. It's gonna probably be like a 30 minute to 45 minute like travel documentary mm -hmm. highlighting the entire journey and all those interactions. That's really cool. I can't wait to see that. Um, I will <laughs> I will <laughs> definitely be watching that for sure. Um, so cool. for all of us who work in creative spaces, have done this you know, for a while, especially in Southwestern PA, I would say like we have a sense of civic pride in our communities and we just want to make them a more welcoming place for people to thrive, for us to show off to the world, for us to gather. Um, and your pieces on Art in the Alley are definitely helping us with that mission. Um, what's your advice for younger folks who want to follow in your footsteps and make a difference through art? Oh my, uh, there's so much I could say. I would just, the, the easiest thing is to just do it. You know, uh, I think that I've learned just through doing and failing and learning from failing that anything is possible. And every everyone out there that's ever been successful tried and failed and tried again. And uh, I think it's really that simple. The, the few times that you, you put yourself, your neck out there on the line and uh, succeed, is what is the best and the most empowering thing that you could do. Uh, just getting out there, you have something in your heart that you know you wanna do, it's possible to do it. That is the best piece of advice I can give. Uh, outside of that, practice makes perfect. It's the cheesiest line, but that is, the, that is the line of all lines. You can't do what you love unless you are proficient in it and you won't get proficient in it unless you practice. And I, I draw every single day, regardless of if I'm happy, sad, whatever, I know I need to do a little bit of art to keep the, the muscles well exercised. Yeah, for sure. Um, in my free time, I'm a middle school theater teacher. So I teach fifth through eighth grade <laughs> theater. Oh, and, you know, I bet they're fun. <laughs> it, they are wild, but it's so fun at the same time. Uh, middle school is great because you're still weird and you're still allowed to be weird. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, allows me to be weird too. But the trope is a trope for a reason. You know, you just got to practice and fail a little bit. And that's all part of the process. And that's, Definitely. that's, really, that's really cool for sure. Uh, but that, that is all that I have. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today for folks in Westmoreland County to get to know you a little bit um, and, and about your work because we are super lucky to have your pieces in our alley. And like I said, I hope you'll come back to visit us. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm the lucky one here. The, the fact that you guys reached out and were interested in having any of my artwork it means the world to me. So like, thank you guys for letting me be a part of the Greensburg community. So I'm, I'm just happy to be here. To learn more about Zach's work and his impact, visit ZacharyRudderArt.com. And for more information about WCT's Art in the Alley, visit WestmorelandCulturalTrust.org.